Hi everyone, Daryl Legacy here, Instructional Designer for Hack. Today, we're going to look at a new feature in D2L that will make it much easier to give students extra time on tests and quizzes. Students with accommodations are often allowed additional time when taking a quiz. This could be two or three times as much time as the quiz was originally scheduled for, or it could be something like 30 or 60 extra minutes, no matter how long the quiz is. Until now, you would need to go into every quiz in D2L and add special access for the student or students. This could take a long time, especially if you had many quizzes in the course. However, you can now set the student's extra time in the class list and have it apply to all quizzes in the course simultaneously. Let's look at how to do this. First, you'll need to go to your class list. If you have the default navbar, you can click on Resources and then Class List. If you have a unique navbar, you will need to click Edit Course or whatever button you use to get to the Course Tools and Administration area. Once there, you can scroll down and choose Class List under the Learner Management area. Scroll down to your students and click the arrow next to the student where you want to add extra time. Then click Edit Accommodations in the pop-up menu. A new window opens that gives you several options. Check the box next to Modify Time Limit to give this student more time on all quizzes. The first box is Multiplier of Original Time. Click this radio button and enter a number in the box if you need to give the student twice or three times as much time. You can also use decimals, which is good if you need to give a student, say, 2.5 times as much. The next box says Extra Time. Click this radio button and enter a number in the box if you want to add a flat number of extra minutes for this student, no matter how long the original quiz was. This could be useful if the student has a piece of assistive technology that needs time to boot up, or if they have an assistant that needs to be able to log in with them. The bottom box allows the student to always right-click in the quiz. This is only necessary if you've clicked the Disable Right-Click box when setting up the quiz and this student needs to be able to right-click for some reason. One example would be a student with a screen reader where they need to be able to right-click to change settings. If you haven't disabled right-click on any quizzes, then you don't need to use this option. Let's choose the multiplier option and type a 2 in the box. Click Save at the bottom. This should give the student double the time that other students are allowed. After a short while, if you refresh the page or come back to the class list, you will see a new icon next to that student's name. That icon indicates that the student has accommodations that give them extra time on all quizzes. Let's look at one of the quizzes we created, and then let's see what it looks like to the student who has accommodations that give extra time. If I click on the Read and Write test, and then go to the Restrictions, we can see the time limit we created. Scrolling down, you can see that it has an enforced time limit of 120 minutes, after which the students are prevented from making any changes. You can also see that no one was given special access on this specific quiz. Now let's log in as our fake student and see what they see when they start that quiz. Scrolling down, you can see that it shows four hours as the time allowed, which is twice as much as the 120 minutes that we put for the restrictions. So it's working as intended, and if the student starts the quiz, they will see the four-hour timer counting down. However, there's one important thing to note here. If you place text in the description or introduction, all students will see that before they begin the quiz. If you state how long they're allowed on the quiz, as I did here, that may confuse students who have accommodations. If they see that you've written they're allowed two hours, they may not even notice the four hours showing under time allowed. It's understandable to want to inform students of how much time they have. However, you may want to add a short sentence that says that students with accommodations should look at the time allowed area to see what their actual time is. The student can also see the icon next to their time allowed that shows their extra time is being applied. So you should remind them to watch for that to make sure they're getting their extra time before starting the quiz. If you have a quiz where the student shouldn't get extra time, you'll need to go in and add special access for them to override the class-wide accommodation you created. This is probably a rare occurrence, but it could happen if a student is allowed extra time but wants to try one without it to see if they can do it with a default time limit. 
Before removing a student's extra time for the quiz, contact Student Access Services to make sure that's appropriate. If you do decide that you need to remove or edit their time for one quiz, go into the Restrictions tab of that quiz. Scroll down and click Add Users to Special Access. Choose either Recommended or Enforced time limit. If you choose Enforced, you'll see three different boxes that allow you to manipulate the time allowed. Let's pretend that you want to put this student's time on this one quiz back to the default that all other students are allowed. New Time Limit allows you to manually set the amount of time you want for this student. The number that's there, already, is the original time allowed on the quiz, so you can leave this number at the original time allowed. Or, you could change Multiplier back to 1, which resets their allowed time to the default for the quiz. Or, you could change Extra Time to 0. All three of these have the same effect of taking away any extra time and resetting this student's allowed time to the default just for this one quiz. You'll see that the other two boxes change when you change one of them. So if you change the multiplier, it adjusts both the new and extra time limit boxes to match. Because of this, you need to be careful. If you accidentally set the multiplier to zero, it changes the new time limit to zero and the extra time to negative 120 minutes. So be careful about how you adjust the boxes. Scroll down, click the box next to the student or students whose extra time you're editing, and click Add Special Access at the bottom. A window will pop up warning you that changing the student's time here will override the global accommodation that you gave them earlier. This is a good chance to double check if that's what you want and a good reminder to check with Student Access Services if this is allowed for the student with accommodations. If you need to edit their extra time for other quizzes, you'll just need to follow this same process. Most of the time, you'll just be able to add an accommodation in the class list, either as a multiplier or as a flat time, and you won't need to adjust any specific quizzes. You do still need to edit the accommodation for each student, but you only need to do it once now, so this should save you a lot of time. That's all you need to do to give a student extra time on quizzes for the entire semester. If you have questions, please contact me or someone else in CDI.